I could get through to you, don't know what I'd do to ya Anything I say will come off as wrong and you're not alone Something feels out of place but you have no tell What's up everyone? China Cycling here today with something a bit different. Today we're looking at this, the DJI Osmo Pocket. This is what I call the most underrated camera for bike related videos in the world. I've been using this guy for around six months now. All the videos you've seen on my channel these days, a huge chunk of the footage just came out from this guy. So I have a huge DSLR, I have a mirrorless camera, and I used to use those for most of my videos. Uh, but then I got this guy around six months ago, and now I've pretty much stopped using those bigger cameras and just using this guy, because of how versatile he is. Now, throughout this review, I'll put a bunch of uh, footage in that I've captured on this, just so you can see what it can do. Now, I'm no expert with this thing. I've been using it for six months. I think I've got it down pretty much, but because so many people are using this thing now, there's, there are some real wizards out there. So after you watch this video, if you still want to know more, you can have a look at general photography things. But in this review, I'm mostly going to be focusing on how this camera relates to cycling. And the first thing you'll notice about this is just how tiny it is. This thing is small. Now, I have small hands. You know what they say about guys with small hands, small gloves. But this thing, even in my hands, is still tiny, which makes it great for cycling because it slips so easily into your rear jersey pocket. And the other reason it's so good for cycling is because, as you've noticed from this shenanigans at the top, this has a three axis gimbal. So when you're riding along and you're all shaky shaky, the, you can see the head stays flat. So perfect for getting video of you rolling along with your mates or even photos of you riding along with your mates. One other good thing about the Osmo Pocket, of course, we don't live our whole life on the bike. So this is actually great for recording your life off the bike as well. Maybe none of us have a real life off the bike. We're 24 seven about the bike life, but if you have a family or whatever, this thing is so great for capturing family moments because again, it's so small, you can throw it anywhere, take it with you, and then capture those family moments. So first, let's talk about the stats. So we've got this three axis gimbal at the top, uh, but for recording video, we've got 4K resolution at 60 frames a second. Uh, so super high def, perfect, YouTube goes up to 4K. My videos, I only even go up to 1080p, so this is much more than I need. Uh, but in 1080p, it actually has a super slow-mo mode, and uh, yeah, can shoot at super high frame rate, so then when, when you put it on the computer, everything, you get all that nice, silky smooth, slow motion video shots. Uh, it can also do time lapses, so you sit it there and it will take a photo every X amount of seconds and pan across so you can make cool little time lapse things. Or it can make panorama photos, so you hold it still and it will take nine photos and stitch them all together for you. So one cool thing is how easily this thing attaches to your phone. So we have your little connector here, there are three different connectors, USB-C, USB mini and uh, Apple Lightning. And so yeah, plug it into your phone, and boom, your phone screen will become the screen of the Osmo. So you can use this as a screen for looking around, bloop, 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 and do everything on this screen. So again, super easy to film stuff. Also, it lets you transfer the videos to your phone super quickly too. One stat that this doesn't have is Wi-Fi connectivity. So out of the box, there's no way for this to connect to your phone. You have to buy this little gimbal attachment thing. So yeah, I think Wi-Fi is something it definitely should have had out of the box. Uh, it's not cheap, price down below. Uh, so connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, so we have got to connect to the Wi-Fi. Osmo Pocket, connect. So yeah, once you're connected, we're back in the app and we can kind of do everything we could do if we're connected, but wirelessly. Also, out of the box, there's no way to really attach it to anything. There's no uh, tripod screw mount or anything. And so again, you have to pay for another accessory. This is the official adapter accessory thing. And, and so one thing you know this, 
you can't actually use it with this little adapter on. So you're gonna take this adapter off, this tiny little adapter, put it somewhere and hope you don't lose it. You're gonna lose it. But of course, if you lose it, they'll sell you another one. And then, okay, once that's off, then we can get this little jacket on. And now we've got your standard, normal GoPro adapter, so you can attach it to all of your GoPro accessories. And luckily, they put this little gap here so you can still use the buttons. I've already mentioned how small it is, but stats-wise, it's actually just 116 grams and just 12 centimeters tall. Uh, the sensor in this bad boy is a, a one over two third of an inch sensor, which is smaller than what you'd get in like a mirrorless camera, but bigger than what you'd get in a smartphone. So it means you still get really nice image quality and also you get some nice bokeh on the out of focus stuff. Speaking of bokeh, the lens is roughly equivalent to about a 28 millimeter, so not super wide angle, pretty comfortable, but a f2.0, so a pretty wide lens for, for its size, uh, and it actually has to focus on stuff. So many action cameras like the GoPro or whatever, they're fixed focus, they don't focus on things, so you can't get those nice arty shots of the stuff in the foreground being in focus and the stuff in the background being blurry, but with this, lens you can. So why do I think this is the most underrated camera for riding? Well again like I said it's perfect for jersey pockets, uh, it's so small and so light like even if you're a serious weight weenie like this thing is, is light. Uh, the biggest weakness is there's no z-axis stabilization. So when you're walking along, you, you bob up and down and you need that z-axis stabilization. But when you're on a bike, you don't actually bob up and down. You know, you, you lean left and you lean right, you lean forward, you lean backwards, but the bike doesn't go up and down. So the lack of z-axis stabilization isn't an issue when you're on the bike. Uh, another reason I think it's great for the bike is the slow motion shots. Uh, again, all you have to do is just film some footage of your mates on the bike uh, in slow motion and then put some music over the top of it, slap on some LUTs or some filters and boom, you've got some really good cool footage you can use. Weaknesses for on the bike, I'd say it's not waterproof uh, and it's, uh, yeah, maybe not sweat proof either. But uh, looking, you know, if this is the bit that's going to be against your back, there's no real way for the water or the sweat to get in. Uh, it does come with this case, and again, so this is going to make it a bit bigger, but uh, yeah, you can slap it in this case and uh, put that in your pocket, and then obviously you can have a lot less of a sweat on it or whatever. Another point that makes it pretty good for riding is the, what I said before, the 28 millimeter lens. So if you're using a GoPro, which is, or an equivalent action camera, which is super wide angle, it's cool for vlogging and stuff, and cool for putting on the front of your bike going downhill, but just shots of other people riding the bike or shots of the scenery as you go past, like, it's not ideal. But I think 28 mil is a good, like, it's good for portrait stuff and it's good for landscape stuff. It's somewhere in the middle. If you're into all that vlogging stuff, the mic isn't in the best place. So the mic is actually down here. And so if you're riding along at any, any high speeds, if you hold it, I found if you hold it like this, you'll reduce the wind noise some, but you're still gonna pick up quite a lot of wind noise when you're riding along. So this happens all the time in China. These water trucks come along trying to clean the road. That's the same with any camera solution when you're on a bike. So lots of people will use like a lapel mic or they'll use a, a mic with a, a dead cat mic cover on it. This thing, you can use external mics, but not out of the box. You have to buy the adapter for it. And uh, yeah, I didn't even bother buying that adapter. I have spent enough money on adapters. Another feature that makes it pretty cool for just a riding camera is uh, the app. So they built the smartphone app, DJI Mimo, you can make a video super quick in it. Uh, you can just tell it which shots to use, choose a preset, filter, and done. And so, you know, at the cafe stop, you know, you're waiting for your drinks or whatever, just slap your smartphone on, transfer the videos, and in five minutes, you can make a cool little video to show your mates. Another thing which I think is uh, underrated, the, the screen. So the screen is really tiny, but even outside, you can see it pretty brightly. Uh, it's not big enough to tell if something's in or out of focus, but luckily the autofocus on this thing hasn't let me down yet. Use it to touch screen and pan up and down and go through the menus and stuff, so 
the screen may look like a joke, but I think it's fine for writing and fine for what you're doing. So what are your alternatives if you wanna make videos on your bike? And why do I think this is so underrated? Well, most people out there, they're either using a mirrorless camera or they're using something like a GoPro action camera for their vlogging. Uh, the mirrorless guys, you've got people like Francis Cade. If you don't know Francis Cade, link in the description below. Absolutely awesome vlogger. His vlogs are amazing, so beautiful. But yeah, he's carrying around like a Sony mirrorless camera with a huge lens and a huge mic on all his rides. And having that thing strapped to your back is not very convenient. Most of those mirrorless cameras also aren't waterproof. I think Francis Cade broke his Sony Alpha by sweat getting into the camera through the buttons on the back. Also not a cheap thing to break and not a cheap repair. But of course, the advantage of the mirrorless cameras is the image quality. So you're gonna have a larger sensor and uh, you've got more choice of lenses and the lenses are gonna have more variety. So you're gonna have wider apertures to get even more nice uh, out of focus bokeh and stuff. Things like the Sony Alpha has in-body image stabilization. Other mirrorless cameras that might put the image stabilization in the lens, but no image stabilization can compete with a gimbal. Like a gimbal, you're physically moving the lens. So yeah, you can't compete. Other vloggers out there, they're vlogging with GoPros or other action cameras. Uh, you got people like Jasper, Jasper, sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, great vlogger, great content. Uh, yeah, he's using a GoPro, I think. And uh, advantages of your GoPro is obviously it's waterproof. You're not gonna have the same problems that Francis Cade have of sweat breaking it. Uh, it's waterproof, so you don't have to worry about it in the rain. GoPro is super wide angle, so depending on what you're trying to shoot, you might want that wide angle. But the GoPro image quality, in my opinion, not as good as the Osmo. And the main reason is what I said before with the lens. So this f2.0 lens is fairly wide aperture. Whereas the GoPros usually have like an f2.8 or an f3.5 lens, and again, fixed focus. So you're not gonna get that out of focus bokeh. So the main advantage of the Osmo Pocket is just the silky smooth 4K video. Like the actual video image quality and the actual smoothness of the gimbal. Uh, the super compact form factor is obviously its other main advantage when you're talking about taking it on a bike ride. Also, not overly expensive. Uh, price in various currencies below, but compared to a mirrorless setup, yeah, pretty cheap. Around the same price as a GoPro, a decent GoPro maybe, but in my opinion, you're getting more for your money with this gimbal setup. So disadvantages of the Osmo Pocket or things I don't like, the main one is how they like nickel and dime you with the accessories, you know, making you buy the Wi-Fi adapter, making you buy the whatever you even call this but the Osmo Pocket has been pretty popular, so now there's a pretty big scene of manufacturers making their own add-ons for it and stuff. Other disadvantages are just some of the dumb design choices they did, such as having to take this off when you put this adapter on, like, you know, you're just gonna lose it. That's not, not cool, why can't they just make the hole a bit bigger so it can stay on? Uh, one main disadvantage of this, if you thinking about using it for on your bike is if you attach it directly to your bike with this, so it's very good at smoothing out like these rotations and mo movements, but it's not great at smoothing out really harsh vibrations. What will happen if, when your bike hits a really sharp bump is the, the focus elements in the lens will actually be knocked out. And so you'll have this split second of the focus hunting and the, the, the shot will go a bit blurry. Uh, if you attach it to you on the bike, it's fine because you know we're nice and soft and squidgy and, it, and absorb all of those harsh vibrations. But if you attach it directly to your handlebars or directly to a hard part of your bike, whenever you hit a bad bit of road, you're gonna get that focus hunting, which is something you're not gonna get on a GoPro because they've got that fixed focal lens. Lastly, the main disadvantage for being on a bike is the lack of waterproofing. Again, it's so small that if it does start to rain, if you've got a waterproof saddlebag or something, I'm sure it can go inside, or any, you can find another sort of plastic bag to throw it inside, or use the case to increase its waterproofness a bit. But again, you know, there's a risk that if the heavens open and it really starts raining, you might get it killed. So 
I'm definitely gonna keep using mine just because of how versatile it is. I'll definitely recommend it to anyone who wants to capture videos on and off the bike. Like I say, uh, you can justify the purchase to the wife by saying you're gonna make some videos of your kids or whatever. Uh, anyway, that's a quick introduction to the Osmo Pocket and why I think it's the most underrated camera for cycling. There's a link in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. If you guys have any other hints or tips on using the Osmo Pocket for bike rides, put them in the comments below and let other people check them out too again if you want more reviews like this subscribe give this video a like so more people see it and i'll see you next time china cycling out something feels out of place but you have